6 p.m. in Bankim. Uh, good evening, viewers, and welcome to the third edition of our 6 p.m. Prime News. We'll begin right away with our major stories. Cameroon is leading in the fight against epidemics like monkeypox, cholera, and COVID-19 as statistics. According to the Minister of Health, Dr. Manauda Malashi is very encouraging. Remarks given during a press briefing at the National Epidemic Operation Emergency Center in Yaoundé this October 26, 2022. A three-year contract worth 50 billion CFA friends has been signed between the African Travel Management Company with the Ministry of Forestry and Wildlife in a bid to preserve ecotourism and Cameroon's rich cultural heritage in Campo Mans in Yaoundé, September 25, 2022. And out of the country, 50,000 civilian defense volunteers will soon join the Burkina Faso military to fight against jihadis in the north following the 30th September coup led by Captain Traoré. Headlines developments in a moment. Good evening once more. We begin right away with a health page where the Minister of Public Health, Dr. Manawuda Malashi, has presided over a press conference today to give an evaluation on the statistics of epidemics like monkeypox, COVID-19 and cholera in the country. Quite encouraging is the fact that the government is having everything under control and has called on Cameroonians to stay calm for they are doing everything to make everybody stay healthy. Justine Afu was present and this is her report. According to statistics given by the Ministry of Public Health as of October 19, 2022, over 623 million of positive COVID-19 cases have been recorded worldwide with over 606 million recovered and over 6 million deaths recorded with a mortality rate of 1%. In Africa, over 12 million positive cases were recorded with 11 million recovered cases and over 250 deaths, the mortality rate of 2.1%. In Cameroon, over 100 confirmed cases were recorded with over 1,000 deaths. As concerns the cholera epidemic which resurfaced, over eight regions have seen to have been touched with over 200 persons affected in these regions. With the cases of yellow fever, 27 cases had been detected with no major cause for alert. With the recent cases of monkeypox which is seen to have resurfaced, in the southwest region, so cases have been recorded with two deaths and a mortality rate of 4%. With the prevalence rate of these diseases in the country, the Ministry of Public Health is calling on health actors to put in efforts towards fighting these epidemics as the country will host the fourth forum for managing public health emergencies. This uh, meeting of international and nationalist aspects in the management of public health emergencies will be an opportunity to share with the national and international scientific community, the achievement of the COVID-19 pandemic in strengthening our health system. During this month, the capacity of the actors of the health system will be built on terms such as the incident management system, surveillance, health information systems, and basic emergency medical procedures. As the country counts over 2 million vaccinated cases against COVID-19, a feed wave of the vaccination campaign is scheduled to run from the 18th to the 27th of November 2022, more so so as to maintain the zero polio prevalence rate, a national campaign of over 1 million children to be vaccinated aged 0 to 59 months would take place from the 4th to the 6th of November 2022 in over 44 health districts across the country. Let us remain united and continue to scrupulously observe the measures enacted by the government and World Health Organization. As the Cameroon government puts in efforts to fight these epidemics, the entire public is thereby called upon to jointly support in the measures put out. 
the second edition of the African Education Fair that opens on Tuesday in Hiawunde was also an opportunity to exhibit a Cameroon's rich cultural heritage. This was aimed at bringing youth closer to their rich cultural heritage that most of them seem to have been forgetting about it as they pay more attention to the Western civilization. Shira Dinase in this report. Bringing the youth closer to the African culture is equally the focus of this second edition of the African Education Fair that opened in Yaoundé on Tuesday, October 25, 2022. Exhibitors drawn from all the 10 regions of Cameroon came in to showcase their know-how for these youth to see and touch with their hands what they have been learning about the history and culture of Africa and Cameroon in particular. Artwork that carry the African history, royal stools, hand-marking traditional dresses, beads and traditional slippers are some of the craft works exposed by these exhibitors. You can see the royal stools, you can see the Bamenda dresses called Togo, you can see many things, the royal mask, you can see many art objects that represent our culture. We are here to teach the, the young ones our culture because they don't only have to read on, in books and only hear, but they have to see it and touch them with their hands. And I'm praying that they should not only see it, but they should practice it because most of our youth today, they are outside there. What interests them is what is coming out of Cameroon, out of Africa. They, they forget their culture. We have to teach them the, our culture and we have to follow them to see that they practice it. The theme of this year's affair focused on education and youth entrepreneurship, issues and challenges for Africa's development. An opportunity for these youth to get interested in this trait of craft work and why not get trained in the production of these cultural tools that represent Africa and its riches. A three-year contract worth a 50 billion CFA friends has been signed between the African Travel Management Company and the Ministry of Wildlife and Forestry. This is aimed at seeing how to restore other reserves in Campo by preserving the ecotourism system in the country. Camdis Television was present during the signing ceremony and this is the report. Historic win of change accompanied with the signing of a partnership towards the conservation and valorization of wildlife and local development in the Campoman National Park with quality services to the benefits of the state. Uh, to make the parks more available and to enhance the products and service offers around these parks and in these parks for tourism, for ecotourism. And uh, the agreement we're signing today, the, this agreement we just signed today, uh, permits this to happen. Uh, it's a private-public partnership or a public-private partnership if you prefer, and it permits this to happen in that it gives a leeway to a private operator to offer those services in those parks. And uh, we've started with Campo Man. The involvement of competent experts will contribute in yielding funds and better life. We have in front of us a Cameroonian partner who has all the technicalities, expertise, and who will know how to bring his contribution so that this wildlife reserve becomes objects of development capable of filling state funds to permit ameliorate the living conditions of the population living around the park just as wishes the head of state. A hideous tax ahead, well prepared for. African travel management, when I say we, is going to have a big challenge to make that happen in Kapuman. It's a, a difficult context, but we are up to the task because we've done that in areas that are a bit more difficult than that before. Uh, we have absolutely no doubt that it will be a success and um, it will open up the way for many other operators, uh, just like African Travel Management, who would wish um, to operate in other parks uh, tomorrow. The Campoman National Park, on about 26,400 hectares of land, is rich with leisure sites. 
The partnership agreement assigned is a very important step moving towards using ecotourism to finance the conservation and enhancing the well-being of the population living in and around the national parks in Cameroon. The first ever international agro-pastoral show for plantain and banana will be taking place in Vangam, that is, in the south region of the country. Preparations ahead of this grand ceremony intensify. The regional councillors of the south region were received today by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Obairobi, during the meeting that presented a rundown of the program that will begin in a few weeks from now. Come this television was present. Let's watch. Banana and plantation cultivation in Cameroon is experiencing an improvement through efforts multiplied by the government and local producers. After the Ebolova Agropastoral Show in 2021, Councillors a delegation meet. The South Region Councillors a delegation meet this October 26th in Yaoundé with the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrobe, to present a rundown on how the first ever international feast for the banana plantation show will take place in Bangan, South Region, in a few weeks from now. We intend to organize in Ebolova an important events for the the producer of uh, banana plantain in Cameroon and uh, maybe in Africa and the president of this uh, association uh, asked her to the South Council to support this initiative and uh, the minister have agreed to be the, the important host of these uh, events. Preparations ahead of the feast in Vangan South region are ongoing to valorize uh, their banana plantation sector in the south. We have to prepare our town for it to be naturally beautiful. We have to sensitize the population and producers to come out in their numbers and receive the minister and high personalities that will accompany him and who will come and present their banana plantain that is produced abundantly in our community. We are working on it and to mobilize everyone so that the feast should be relatively beautiful in Mvanga. Since the 16th century, the Penja plantation in the littoral region, very fertile land, exports much quantity of banana in Africa. 16,109 tons sold in September 2022, a decrease of 21.3%. The Ministry of Agriculture accompanies this upcoming international agro-pastoral show to valorize and boost banana plantation production in a bid to accompany the government in achieving the national development strategy by 2030. <laughs> We now take you out of the country where 50,000 civilians have voluntarily been recruited to support the army in the fight against the jihadist group in northern Burkina Faso. This recruitment comes after the failed September coup that was led by Ibrahim Trahori. We have this and other stories with Shira Dinasi. Authorities in Burkina Faso has launched a drive to recruit 50,000 civilian defense volunteers to help the army fight jihadis. These massive recruitments are in addition to the one-time recruitment campaign of 3,000 soldiers to bolster the ranks of the army in the fight against jihadis. These campaigns come after a September 30th coup led by Captain Ibrahim Drare, whose stated aim is to strengthen the anti jihadist fight. At least 10 soldiers were killed and about 50 wounded on Monday in a terrorist attack in Jobo, a town under jihadist blockade for three months in northern Burkina. 
Zimbabwe is on the brink of its biggest wheat harvest in the country's history due to efforts to overcome the global shortages of green caused by the war in Ukraine. Though bushfires and lack of rains are threatening crops yet to be harvested. Like other African countries, Zimbabwe has for decades relied on imports to offset low local production. But after Russia's invasion of Ukraine resulted in global shortages and prices high According to the Deputy Agriculture Minister Vangelis Harry Tatos, the country wanted to ensure self sufficiency at all costs. The country, therefore, is expecting to harvest 380,000 tons of wheat, 20,000 tons above what is consumed domestically. The former president of Niger, Mahamadu Isufu, has warned of the consequences that befell the Sahel, a region plagued by acute insurgency. Yusufu further said that the war in the Sahel has been neglected by the world and instead more attention has been given to Ukraine, terming it a double standard. He added that he hold the international community responsible for the situation in the Sahel following their military intervention in Libya. The former leader was speaking during the just conquest included a Dakar 8th edition of the Dakar International Forum. That was the package we had for you, Odeviris, a recap of our major stories. The Minister of Public Health, Dr. Manauda Malashi, presided over a conference today to give statistics on epidemics like COVID-19, monkeypox and cholera in the country. It is quite impressive that the government is maintaining its feet and the situation is under control. Experts have signed a contract with the Ministry of Wildlife and Forestry to see how to preserve the ecotourism system and the ecosystem in Cameroon. The signature took place yesterday, uh, October 25, 2022. And out of the country, 50,000 volunteers uh, have been recruited by the army to assist them in fighting the jihadist group in northern Burkina Faso. Uh, this recruitment comes after the coup that took place on the 30th of September and led by Captain Ibrahim Traoré. Dear viewers, thanks for watching. Tomorrow, God willing, is another day. Goodbye.